Hello guys, welcome to lab report number 8. This time we're going to talk about electric motors and specifically about universal motors and a little bit about different kinds of induction motors and also a little bit about permanently excited DC motors. And I will start with these types of motors that you can see here which were all salvaged from typical washing machines. This for example is the motor from a Siemens washing machine. This came from a Miele unit and the two others are I guess this one was from a Bosch and this is also a cheaper Siemens unit. So these are typical universal motors in a, with a power rating between 300 and 500 watts as you can find them in the kinds of washing machines that are used here in Europe. In other countries other technologies might be used for the same purpose. The reason why I want to focus on these motors also in future videos is that they can be obtained basically for free or for very little money. With the exception of the Miele motor which is very expensive even as a used part because it is a Miele part can basically be, b be bought for a few euros or salvaged for free. And uh, by for free I mean really for free because at least here in this country lots of people want to throw away their old washing machines but uh, they are looking for someone who takes the washing machine from their home and then disposes of it because these things are very heavy and many normal people don't really have the capability to transport them and so on. So sometimes it can be good if you have a car to check the internet for people who want to give away broken washing machines then you can go there pick up the machine salvage the motor so you basically have them for free not counting the cost for driving there and so on but yeah these are the if you if you wanted to go by how much motor power can I get per money paid then this is the best deal that you can possibly have and in the last days I've been working on the circuit board which you see here and that was actually planned to be part of a major video that I wanted to release this weekend. But as you can see this riser board that's, that is sitting on a slot here is not yet populated. That's because the circuit is not yet completed. So I cannot really uh, publish the results of my work at this time. But we can still talk about different kinds of electric motors, their advantages and disadvantages before you will then see the actual video that I wanted to make which I hopefully will be done with in a couple of days. But let's just talk about the general advantages and disadvantages of these motors and for that I first want to make a little experiment around an induction motor. Not this one but the one in my drill press. So let me just get over there. So we're now over at one of the metal working benches and this is uh, the drill press that I have been using in many of my videos. What I have done in preparation here is to take off that cover, revealing the transmission that is underneath. At the, this side of the drill press you can see an induction motor, also called a three-phase three induction motor or asynchronous motor. In German, Dreiphasen Asynchron Maschine. And you can see that I have installed some electronics right here. This is of course just temporarily sitting on this uh, toolbox right here. What you see up here is basically a Hall effect switch that is connected to a power supply and to my multimeter which will measure the frequency that is given by the Hall effect sensor. And I have made a, a video in which I to um, told you basically how you can use Hall effect sensors like this one to measure the frequency of revolution uh, of rotating parts. If you take a closer look at this right here you can see that there is uh, a little niodymium magnet sitting on this steel wheel here and I glued this in place because otherwise it would fly off once the motor starts spinning. And what happens here uh, you can basically see that, that if you take a look at the multimeter while I spin the transmission is that when the magnet passes under the whole effect sensor the voltage given by the whole effect sensor breaks down and that of course happens once each time the magnet passes. Thus we can read off a frequency when we go into the frequency measuring mode 
that is equal to the frequency of the revolution of the motor shaft on which this wheel is sitting. And let's just turn on uh, the three-phase induction motor. As you can see, we can measure a frequency of revolution of 49.77 or 78 Hz. And what I will do now is to put my hand onto the, the clutch here and just give, a little, give it a little grip, you know? And as you can see, even though I burden the motor, the frequency doesn't really change all that much. It goes down ever so slightly. And what you can also see is that the frequency of revolution of the motor, even under no load or very little load, is below the frequency of the line voltage here in Germany, which is rated at 50 Hz. So here we are measuring the line frequency via the isolation transformer, but that doesn't uh, change anything. The isolation transformer has no effect on the frequency of the grid. And as you can see, it is pretty much bang on 50 Hz, somehow fluctuating 49, 99, 50. So as you can see, uh, the induction motor in the first example was spinning at a lower frequency than the frequency of the AC line. So we have now returned to one of the electronics workbenches and what I have done now is to set up this induction motor here. To be more precise, it is a German-made SEW brand 3.3 kilowatts three-phase induction motor that is uh, sitting on this uh, blanket right here which is supposed to dampen the vibrations caused by the motor's case. And I have done that to show you how silent or how quiet such a motor actually is. And just then as an additional uh, feed here, the motor is in this case not running on three-phase AC as we have seen in the last example, but it will be powered by a single-phase line and that is done by a technique called Steinmetz circuit and I will put a link to that in the video description if you want to try that out yourself. What you do is basically to connect a capacitor to the motor windings, in this case a capacitor bank with I guess over 100 microfarads if I co remember correctly and that is also one reason why you can also uh, already see that a motor of this power rating is actually not supposed to be run with a capacitor. You just need too much of it and it really degrades uh, the power that the motor can put out. Uh, the starting torque is much lower, the actual form of the rotary field is not circular but ellip an, uh, elliptic basically and if you want to run a motor like this and you don't have three-phase AC which by the way is total standard in Germany every household has it basically then you would require what is called a variable frequency drive which is quite expensive but let us just uh, crank up the isolation transformer unit and see how the motor spins up you can again read off the frequency of the revolution of the motor shaft on the DMM. And as you can see the motor will not even spin up by itself, so low is the starting torque that I have to give it a little have to give it a little uh, kick there. But as you can see the motor is now only running at one half of its rated voltage or even lower lower than that. But uh, it already has reached a stable frequency of revolution, in this case 24.95 Hz under no load conditions. And you can also hear that this motor, even though it is quite big, is very silent. That is one of the things, one of the minor reasons maybe, why induction motors are actually far superior over DC motors or the type of universal motors that we will take a look at in just a minute. Other than that, you can really say that the induction motor, and especially a three-phase induction motor of this type, is the working horse of the modern industry. It powers everything from machining tools to saws, basically everything that is over a certain power rating. These motors have also the advantage that they do not have a commutator, that's also the reason why they are so silent. And that means that there is also no need to replace the motor brushes after a time, so the lifespan or the potential lifespan of these motors 
is also much bigger than that of a DC motor or, or a universal motor. So we've, before we proceed to the universal motor and other motor types, let's talk a little bit about this particular type of induction motor that you can find for example in dishwashers. And I will link a video in the video description where I basically tore apart um, a Miele brand dishwasher and experimented with the circulating pumps. As you can see I hacked this in a way and you will see that in that video. These circulating pumps are powered by these small scale induction motors which are always powered by single line AC and that's why they always have a motor capacitor. So this technology is very similar to the large induction motor that we just saw. Just that this motor is not rated for 3.3 kilowatts but for 100 watts and uh, ergo it also has a much smaller capacitance here or a capacitor with a much smaller capacitance acting as a motor capacitor. And these motors are actually also just as the universal motors I've shown you in the beginning of the video basically very cheap you can get them for free just like the universal motors but of course they are only rated for about 100 watts or maybe 150 watts and that is so, sort of a limitation it makes them at least too weak to be acting in some kind of power tool or something but let us hook this to the up to the isolation transformer as well and take a look at the frequency of revolution so at the full line voltage here at uh, around 230 volts we see a frequency of revolution of around 23.8 Hertz and by the way if you're more used to RPMs just multiply this value by 60 because 1 Hertz is nothing but one event per second in this case one revolution per second so times 60 one revolution per minute let us um, simply turn down the voltage here to a value lower than 230 volts and by now we must be at around 115 volts and you can see even though the motor is powered with just uh, about half its rated voltage the frequency of revolution has dropped only so slightly and that is of course because the motor is not loaded really but it also shows us that the frequency of uh, revolution of the motor is directly dependent on the line frequency but not directly dependent on the voltage on the supply voltage at least if it is high enough to power the motor accurately. So that means if I could crank up the voltage even more over 230 volts we would I guess not even see an increase in the frequency. The motor would be a little bit louder maybe but we wouldn't really see an increase in the frequency at least not over a certain percent percentage. So this is just uh, something and that is why I made these three examples basically to tell you that an induction motor is it's hard to control in the way that you need three phase AC at home or a motor capacitor but it is easy control to control in the way that it will stabilize at a certain frequency of revolution without the need for any circuitry. So here we have one of the universal motors uh, which I salvaged from a washing machine in this case of a higher priced Siemens brand machine. As you can see, seven leads are coming out of that motor and that can be an obstacle for someone who is basically just a hobbyist. He will be probably very confused by the fact that there are more than two or three wires coming out of the motor. And what it is about those seven wires, and sometimes it's even more, will be explained in the next video, okay? For now I have basically connected the exciter winding and the rotor in series as it is supposed to be with a universal motor. And just as a little demonstration, here is a 12 volt lead acid battery and we can connect the motor to that and you can see it spinning up. So that's a practical demonstration of the fact that a universal motor can run on DC as well. But for the little demonstration that I actually wanted to make let us connect this motor to the isolation transformer. Okay, so what I will do now is to simply crank up the isolation transformer to some relatively low value and we will see what happens to the frequency of revolution.
as you can see, the frequency increases and increases and increases. Even though the motor is only about roughly one third of the rated supply voltage, it is already hard to stabilize the frequency. If I go further up, let's say to a little more of that, we are already at a value that is much higher than we made it at the, uh, at the induction motor. And right now the motor is spinning at over 10,000 RPMs already. And that is one big problem with these uh, motors, as they are actually made for what is called Regelbetrieb, which means that they must be regulated. And that is exactly what my project is about. I have set up this PCB right here with a phase fired controller that takes basically a sensory input from that motor and then corrects the firing angle of the phase fired controller so that this motor can be run at a constant frequency independent of the supply voltage and independent of the load on the motor axle. So I will not do this in practice because, it's not, because it is not good for the motor. But the thing is that when I crank up the voltage to a value around the voltage that the motor is rated for, 230 volts, without burdening the motor, without loading it, it will spin at 20,000, 30,000 RPM or even more and the ball bearings inside the motor as well as the carbon brushes will wear out very quickly. The motor will, so to speak, damage itself, destroy itself by not being regulated. And that is just one major problem that I, that I really want to tackle for the maker community. I want to come up with a circuit that people can build that will help them to really utilize these motors that you can basically get for free, but that are, so to speak, hard to handle because they have a tendency of destroying themselves. So. Yeah, this is basically what I have been working on in this week and I hope this, that this little video was interesting for you even though I couldn't do my actual presentation and uh, present the circuit that I was working on. But as I said, I think it'll be done in a couple of days, so hope to see you soon.